Do you know what a gish is? Uh, I think a lot of people who are veterans of tabletop role-playing games do. Uh, but it's not really a common word. Actually, it, it, it's a word I think that doesn't exist at all outside of, like, D&D &D specifically. And then it has been borrowed for a few other related RPGs. Um, it's a pretty specific concept. Um, and so it makes sense that it doesn't really exist outside of D&D. &D. Um, it is a, a hybrid... Uh, like martial and spellcaster character, a character that fights with a weapon, but also casts spells. Um, and the idea has sort of evolved quite a bit from its origins as a description of Githyanki, like spellcaster hybrids. Um, because in the older versions of D and D, uh, the Gith have a um have like a strong like martial wizard kind of uh, uh tradition the term has evolved quite a bit to encompass sort of any hybrid character regardless of species um and it is also sort of sort of implying interactions between uh your weapon using abilities and your spellcasting abilities um, that is, I think, largely a factor of game designers understanding that in order to have a sort of unified and coherent character mechanic, you have to have some interact. You can't have two separate kits that don't interact at all. They have to interact. They have to uh, synergize to some extent. So instead of... Because like, if you just have blasting spells and fighting abilities and no interaction between them then you are two characters that either are just as good as the people who specialize in this stuff in which case you are more versatile that's overpowered that's busted there's no reason for that to be or you are less powerful than the people whose uh, abilities you're trying to emulate there's no inherent value in that kind of versatility usually. Um, so you need to have some sort of purpose for mixing the two forms. You need to be able to do something different, something that the fighter can't do and something the wizard can't do that is meaningfully contributing to your party success. So I have some thoughts on gish type mechanics and how to make them work. And I think we, uh, we all know where this is going. We need look no further than the fourth edition sword mage as the quintessential gish character the sword mage is a gish from the ground up most gish type characters have to be made by multi-classing between martial classes and caster classes and picking up feats that make them work kind of together a little bit better picking spells that are purpose built for enhancing your uh, your martial ability uh, the sword mage kind of does all that for you he says here's a full package a coherent uh, designed package. About half your abilities are traditional spells, uh, and about half are weapon attacks. Um, you're getting all sorts of, like, elemental damage in there, lots of, you know, fire and lightning and, uh, and cold. Uh, yeah, I think fire, lightning, cold, maybe some thunder in there as well. Those are the primary damage types that the, uh, the sword mage does. And you're a defender. But you defend your allies in a very different way than most other defenders. Because uh, most defenders have to, like, stay next to the enemy to control them. You, may, you, know, you, you have to stand there and stop the enemy from moving around you, stop them from attacking your allies so you can threaten them. Uh, the sword mage doesn't do that. The sword mage can uh, mark an enemy and then head off this way and go do something else. And if that enemy misbehaves, you get to teleport and either enhance your allies' defenses or punish the enemy for their hubris. Um, the, the, the sword mage is the quintessential teleporter. It's their primary mechanic. They teleport a lot. Um, and certain specializations of sword mage might also uh, dabble in phasing, which allows you to move through solid objects. Um, uh, some of them might specialize in like doing bigger AoE attacks. Uh, sword mages are excellent minion clearers. Um, so this is a class designed to be gishy. And I think it's kind of 
the, the best example of a Gish type character that D&D has ever had. But a few other kind of examples exist. Now, here's the funny thing. The Ranger and the Paladin kind of count as Gishy, don't they? Because they're half casters, but they're also primarily weapon users. It's just that the, the term Gish usually only applies to arcane style casters. The kind that are going to be doing like blasting spells and not the kind that do like primal magic or divine magic. Those are usually outside of that identity. Uh, otherwise, paladins will have been the, the premier Gish class since forever. Uh, they were the first like hybrid weapon caster type character. Uh, if you don't want to count cleric, which also is a casting class that has been encouraged to use uh, weapons for a long time to varying degrees. It's usually not ideal. Um, but those are those usually don't count uh, because they're not arcane style casters. There's there's a, a sort of difficult to define uh, identity for arcane magic. Usually it's elemental. So you have, you know, the, the fire, the lightning, the thunder, the cold, these sort of like classically wizardy type damage types um, that uh, uh, are, I think, central to the idea of your blasting spells. Like if you don't, if you're not able to do attack spells with those damage types, you're probably not really in the gish territory. Um... But, uh, uh, yeah, so, like, there, there are hybrid classes between casting and weapon using, but they're not necessarily Gish. Um, probably the closest thing 5th edition has to a Gish class is things like the, uh, the, um, uh, the Hexblade for the Warlock and the Spellsinger for the, uh, the Wizard. Both of these are caster classes that get weapon stuff. You do, of course, have things like the Arcane Archer, the uh, the Eldritch Knight, um, the uh, Arcane Trickster, subclasses for martial characters that get very, very limited amounts of spellcasting. But those are entire... Hmm. They're, they're, they're some of the strongest subclasses for those classes, just because the classes are so weak. And specifically because they get spells in a game where spells are the way to do anything. But if you want to have a strong character, a character that can actually feel like they can mix it up in melee and still contribute meaningfully to their party success, you want to either go with a warlock or a wizard because you're casting spells. Like, even if your weapon stuff, like the, the whole gish thing that you're trying to do, if that doesn't work out at all, you say, all right, we're not doing that anymore. We have to get serious. I'm still a wizard, or I'm still a warlock. I'm still, like, throwing big-time magic out there, you know? Um, and that really is what it is. Like, the, the, the gish aspect of these subclasses is a luxury. If the encounter is not that difficult, you can afford to, you know, go into melee and mix it up with weapons. Sure, why not? It is kind of suboptimal, though. It's always better to stay away from the enemy where they cannot hurt you and lay down control spells or, you know, do warlock things like, you know, blast them a bunch of times and knock them way back. Uh, the, the ways that casters have to just choose not to interface with the enemy directly. Um, that's tactically always going to be better than going up in melee on purpose. Um, so, like, 5th edition doesn't really encourage the gish archetype for a lot of reasons that have actually surprisingly little to do with class design. Because, I mean, I mean, what it really boils down to, as far as class design goes, 5th uh, edition doesn't have the martial side to really expound upon. You can be proficient in weapons. And now with uh, the, the new books, you can have weapon mastery abilities, which is more or less equivalent to cantrips. Um, but there isn't, like, a list of maneuvers to use weapons with. So it's, you can cast spells, which is, you know, the good thing, and then you can also attack with a weapon if you want to, which is not the good thing. Like, that, you it's generally worse than doing a cantrip. It does slightly more damage, but in melee and with no additional uh, effects. No riders or anything. 
Mm, that is not good. That is not good. I had to get an alternate drink for lunch today and it's, I don't prefer it. Um, all right. So, uh, where entirely was I? Uh, the, um, yeah, so there's there's no like meat on the weapon side of the equation for you to like latch onto. Like 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 you can be a half caster, but there's no like half weapon user unless uh unless you want to count like getting extra attack late, if that if you want to count that. That's like having cantrips that don't scale until later. But like it doesn't have there's no equivalent to like reduced spell slot progression because marshals don't get anything equivalent to spell slots you either are proficient in weapons or you are not you either have extra attack or you do not and that's it so that's why gish type characters so it's such a popular archetype is the thing a lot of people want to make gish like oh i need help making my my gish character and like you're playing fifth edition it's not really a game that encourages that kind of character or that kind of play. Uh, you might as well just build a straight wizard and wear armor and get into melee and cast spells from there, right? And just sort of like reflavor it as weapons. Like there's there's weapon uh, cantrips that you could take, uh, and there's weapon based uh, spells like uh, Steel Song Strike. Um, which used to be a monk ability. It was a monk ability in 4th edition. And then the wizard got it for reasons, because no one can have anything if it's not a wizard ability. <sighs> Anyways. So I I like Gishes as a, as a concept. They are thematically very compelling, but mechanically they just don't work in 5th edition, mainly because... There's no real benefit to using weapons over using spells. And there's not a lot of interaction between those two systems, even for the spell, uh, even for the, the subclasses that, that get some of that. Like, like occasionally there's like, you know, when you take the attack action, you can also cast a cantrip in place of one of your attacks. Like, sure, sure, I guess. It's, it's not a lot. It really isn't. Um, and it, it all boils down to the fact that there's, there's no, mechanics for weapon use. And I think that's that's unfortunate.